Now there is no doubt I love home brewing and just like a lot of you other guys watching this video, I'm sure you love it too, but everyone has this common hatred for bottling and canning. One of the problems is it's time consuming and sitting there filling up bottles is just like a pain in the bum and it just gets really laborious very, very quickly. Which is one of the reasons why the Kegland business exists. We started up this business because we hated, you know, the process of bottling and canning so much and a lot of our staff moved over to kegging, which is kind of why we're here. But it's still really handy to be able to have a device to fill up some bottles and cans. Let's say you take them to a barbecue or taking a, you know, giving them away to a friend or let's say you're catering for an entire wedding and you want to just have a heap of bottles to give away as uh, bonbonieres or something like that. You know, it's a great idea. Or let's say you can't afford a keg system. Sometimes your only option is, uh, you know, bottling for instance. So, you know, this new device basically takes a lot of that labor out of the process. So if you're bottling and canning, one of the things you'll notice is the time consumption consuming is not, the time consuming part of the process is not applying the lid. To put a swing top a lid on, it's pretty quick, generally looking at a few seconds. You know, same things with a can. You fill a can, put in a lid on and seaming it with a can seamer, like the cannula can seamer, it only takes a few seconds. Applying a cork only takes a few seconds, but the filling of the actual bottles and cans themselves is the time consuming part. So to have a new device like this, the cannula wrapped can and bottle filler, it does take a lot of that out of the, a lot of that laborious waiting there holding a can out of the process. So you can literally set this type of machine up, drop a can in like this, and then hit a button and that'll fill and that frees you up to do other things. So then you can go and for instance, you know, apply a label or wipe them down or wash the bottle off or put them into a box or do something else. So, you know, on a you know day where you're filling a whole bunch of cans or bottles, this can really speed that whole process up. So I'm gonna get into how to use the machine, how to set it up and how to get the most out of this bad boy. When you get the cannula wrapped can and bottle filler, really the best type of mounting configuration is mounting it to the wall. You can't really put it on the bench because you need to bring in the bottles and cans from the underside like this. So you need you know, clear access below here so you can bring a can or bottle in from the underside and then start the filling process like that. So pretty straightforward. Now, if you're wanting to mount this, we do have like a downloadable PDF that you can print out. This really helps with mounting. I've actually just got the two screws. There's actually four screws in total you can use, but look, this is just a temporary installation I'm doing here and it kind of works fine just with two. So get this, uh, Guy, print it off on the web. Make sure you're printing to a one-to-one -one scale. So if you've got a printer setting that says scale to printable area or something like that, make sure to turn that off on your printer. Otherwise, this won't print to the right size. So get that, put it on the wall. You can use like maybe a level to make sure that this is um, you know perfectly horizontal and then put a screw through the paper, tear the paper away. So really straightforward there. Once you've got that done, you can put this on the wall like that. Then what you can do is you can adjust this sort of platform here. Now, depending on the bottle or can or champagne bottle that you're filling, um, you need to adjust the height of this. So let's say I've got a can, this is pretty close at the moment. I'll go like that, for instance, and that goes on there fine. Now, let's say that I want to do a wine bottle I might need to just adjust this table. So basically I'm gonna bring this down a bit. So this is, the wine bottles are pretty long, so I'm gonna go almost to the bottom here, it's probably about there, I guess. Let me just grab that wine bottle over here and check it. So this wine bottle, does that fit under there? Oh, a little bit more. Um, so I've just gotta go slightly further down here. I'm gonna bring it down to about there. And once you've found that height, there we go. So that's that wine bottle now fits on that platform fine. The other thing I have to do is make sure, because I've moved the platform down, I have to also move down the gas and liquid probes here as well. So I'm just gonna push them down like that till I can see they're pretty close to the bottom of this wine bottle here. This is a pretty long wine bottle. It's about as long as they get. So there you go. You can just take that out like so and we're fully adjusted and ready to go. When you first get this device, you're gonna have basically two posts on top of the machine. You've got yellow for liquid, so liquid's basically coming in through here, or it could be beer or wine or whatever, coming through this tube here and down the left-hand side. Then you've got gas coming in the right-hand side. That's the red ball lock disconnect there. So I'm gonna get my CO2 gas cylinder because that's what I wanna purge out my bottles and cans with. Now, this is not a counter-pressure bottle filler device. What this does is it basically purges the bottles and cans out first and then starts the filling process. And all of this is adjustable in the profiles. So what you wanna do is connect, in this case, my CO2. You could use argon if you wanted to, or even nitrogen, but CO2 is generally one of the cheapest gases for this application. So I'm gonna hook that up on top there. 
And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna basically set the gas pressure. So this particular type of bottle and can filler, it doesn't require you to set the regulator to anything in particular, as long as the gas is somewhere between two and up to two PSI, up to about 100 PSI is fine. So it's got a huge operating range and that's because we have integrated a regulator into the device here. So I'm just gonna remove the liquid tube there for a second. And you can see under here, we've got this little screwdriver hole or a Phillips head screwdriver a hole where I can turn this anti-clockwise or clockwise to adjust the gas flow speed. So that integrated regulator means that every time you use this machine, irrespective of how you have your, let's say, kegerator set up or anything like that, you don't need to then turn your pressures on your um, you know, kegerator system down or whatever. You can just basically hook up the gas and away you go. But you do have to just set this gas flow rate up the first time you use the machine and that's it. You can just pretty much set it and forget it. So to set that up, what you wanna do is you wanna get a glass of water and you wanna basically see how quickly the gas is coming through that tube. So if I had this all the way anti-clockwise, then pretty much hardly any gas would come through. So I'm just gonna twist that with my Phillips head screwdriver. Now to do this adjustment, I'm also gonna hold the gas cycle on you know, a bit longer, which gives me a bit more time to make the adjustment. So I'm gonna go into this 330 mil can profile. So I click enter there, and then I'll find that profile in the fill presets here. 330 mil can, enter that one. And at the moment it's got a two second purge and fill up to 110 millimeters in height. So I'm gonna go into that purge setting here and I'm basically gonna change that to, oh look, something really high. I'm gonna say like 30 seconds. It's like probably, you know, way too much really for any, you know, normal filling process. But for the sake of this, there you go. I'm at 30 seconds, which is really a lot, but it's gonna make it easy to do this adjustment. So then I'm gonna go back to the home screen there. And now what I'm gonna do is put this glass in here. So it's just a glass of water like that and then I'm gonna hit the cycle button. So because you're going through this filling process and I don't have any beer connected for this uh, calibration process, it's gonna eventually get to 30 seconds or 40 seconds and give me an error, say something like, you know, filling process has not commenced or we're sensing that nothing's happened because there's no beer connected, so I'll kick up an error, but we're just gonna ignore that for this, uh, this moment. So I hit go like this, and as you can see, look, the gas is actually coming out at a pretty good rate, but let's say I wanted to go slower, I can basically undo this regulator here like that, and it completely stops, or I can just basically go, to be honest with you, about that I'm pretty happy with. That's like a, you don't need a lot of gas, to be honest with you. If you go too high, honestly, you're just gonna be wasting gas to atmosphere. So I think something like about that bubble rate is pretty good for me. So once you get this device, it's a really good idea to calibrate the fill level. Um, you don't have to do it, but certainly it's a good idea. It only takes a few moments and you only have to do it once when you first get the machine. So like it's a pretty straightforward process, but how this machine works is it uses pressure to determine the liquid level inside that bottle or can. Now it does that by basically a pressure transducer, which is just inside the machine behind the circuit board here. And what we've got to do is work out what pressure is equal to a certain distance from the bottom of this probe. So not necessarily the bottom of this table, but from the bottom tip of this probe up to a certain level here. So typically with most of our calibration, if you go into the menu here, I think we have it normally set to about 100 millimeter as the calibration height or 110 millimeter, I think it is. But once we go into the menu here, hit calibrate and then press enter again, now you'll hear the gas start to flow through the probe because it empties any liquid that you've got in the probe. That can sometimes affect the calibration process. So it gives a little bit of a squirt of gas through there first. And you can see here it says, you know, press the up and down arrows to adjust uh, to a known height. So what, what I wanna do is basically get that there. It's currently set at 100 millimeters. Now this is important to see that it's mm, not ml, because there's millimeters in terms of, you know, this measurement on the measuring tape, and then there's milliliters, and it's not a volumetric milliliter measurement. So obviously this machine, if it's measuring the pressure from the tip, it doesn't know how wide that vessel is. So you can't say, it's 100 milliliters. It can only tell you how high they fill up in that vessel. So, because it's not got a flow sensor, it's a pressure sensor. So what I do is I basically, um, you know, get a measuring tape, for instance, and if I'm gonna use that 100 millimeter measurement as my calibration distance, what I can do is basically get the measuring tape like this, measure that out with the measuring tape, 
as you can see, look, previously, to because I knew I was gonna do this process, I actually put a black text mark here and you can sort of see that on there. So what I wanna do to calibrate is I wanna get that uh, like a glass or something like this, for instance, put it on there like that. Now it could be beer, but I'm just using water because I don't wanna waste water necessarily for this process. Fill it up to where I've got that text mark on there like that to 100 millimeters from the bottom of the probe. And there you go, I'm done now. And then what I can do is you can see that the pressure sensor internally, it's now starting to give me a bit of a stable reading in there. So what I'm gonna go, go and do is press that enter to confirm. And then it basically has now calibrated so it's ready to go. So that is the process of calibration. Now obviously you need to get beer or beverage or your wine or whatever it is to the machine. Now there's a few ways you can do that. You can transfer it directly from, for instance, fermenter or bright tank. Look, in this system, I'm gonna show you how to basically transfer from keg, but more or less the process is all the same. So uh, I've got a kegerator sitting here and I've already got some beer on this tap over on the right here. I've got the uh, Copacabana Coconut IPA, which is a beautiful one. So. Um, I find this particular setup works really well for me. If you're in a situation where you've got a kegerator, you don't have to open the door to get to the kegs or anything like that. You can come directly out of the tap or the faucet right here. Uh, I've got this little adapter on the top here. So this is basically the um, uh, Nuka Tap uh, spout adapter. I think it's, we call it a growler filler or something like that. But basically this can push into a 10 millimeter diameter nozzle. So that just goes straight in there like that. Um, and then the other thing is I can just get that and go straight on top of the machine like this. So really easy way to connect without having to even, even open the kegerator door or even remove the spout on the, uh, on the tap. The other way to do it is you could even go direct the keg. So let's say I've got a keg or this could be a bright tank or something like that. So let's say I've got this keg of beer here. Um, what you can do is make a jumper lead. So here's basically two black ball lock disconnects with some beer line on the other side. So basically I've got this, I go onto the uh, beer post there and then go onto the can and bottle filler like that and then just clip that on. So another easy way to go. To be honest with you, you don't even have to necessarily use the ball lock disconnects. You can have this silicon tube basically come through the machine and if you didn't even want to use a quick disconnect, you wouldn't have to. You can just come straight out there and go to whatever vessel you've got. As long as that beer is supplied at a pressure which is under you know, you really don't wanna be going above about one bar or 15 PSI, because that's obviously when you're gonna overcome the pressures at what the uh, pinch valve here can basically stand. So whatever it is, you could use a pump if you had a low pressure pump, let's say pumping some wine from a tank or bladder or something like that, and your wine bottle filling, you could do that too. Just make sure you're not exceeding that, that maximum pressure that you can handle on the machine. Now, another thing I'm gonna give you a little tip on is if you are using these quick disconnects here and this uh, carbonation cap on the ball lock post, um, I would say it's a good idea, especially for high carbonation products, to remove the poppet from these two fittings. And what I mean by that, it's just under here. So I'll just show you one second here. I'll just disconnect that one and disconnect this and disconnect this here. So let's say I remove the entire beer line from the system like this. So just pull that out and pull that off. So inside this uh, ball lock, uh, this ball lock post here, or the carbonation cap, I've got a little poppet and spring. Now, generally speaking, those poppets and springs are further upstream, uh, but because it's so close to the outlet here, literally I've got you know only 40 centimeters worth of tube or something like that. Sometimes it can cause a little bit of extra fobbing. So in this type of setup where I'm going can after can or bottle after bottle, I want to make that process as fast as I can possibly make it. So removing the poppet will allow me to go that little bit quicker and also reduce any fobbing that I might get. So just get like, normally you get a socket set, but I've got a pair of pliers on my, in my pocket, so I'm just gonna undo this here. So there you go, you undo the back of that barb there and drop out that poppet and spring here. So I've got like basically that pop and, pop and, pop and spring assembly I'm just taking out. And then same thing with the ball lock disconnect. So I've got this ball lock disconnect here, for instance, just, un, just remove the cap, obviously this is the toolless design. Um, so I can just remove the cap like that and then pop the poppet and spring out like this. So I'm taking out that part. Obviously if you, um, take out the pop and spring from one half of it, you have to take it out of the other side, otherwise you'll get no flow because they the two poppets push against each other to open in both directions, which is why it's a dry break type of fitting. Anyway, so that's just a quick little tip there. Um, and that will uh, allow you to really, um, you know, feel a little bit quicker 
without any foaming issues. So putting it back, just screw that back in now. Now there's no poppet. Now you will have to remember that if you do remove the poppets, obviously it's not a dry brake fitting. So, you know, if you've got this tube sitting here, um, you've got to make sure that this is plugged onto that post before you turn the tap on. Otherwise, you know, you turn the tap on, it's just going to start, you know, coming out the other side. So that can make quite a lot of mess. So just remember. Now I've got all my beer line connected. I'm pretty much ready to go. So I'm actually going to start by putting a glass under here and I'm going to tell you why. Firstly, because I want to basically run enough beer through this line here that it cools the line down. It also purges some of the bubbles out and stuff like that and just clears that line out. So throughout the filling process, if you just hit this button like that, it'll stop the filling uh, straight away. So it's also handy in an emergency if let's say something's uh, spilling or you drop something or whatever, you can just hit that green button and it will stop. Uh, the other thing is you don't want to fill cans of beer without having a beer yourself. So that's like a necessary part of the job. So um, yeah, so I've got this set on the 330 millimeter, 330 mil, uh, milliliter uh, profile. So I'm gonna get, put the can under here and I'm gonna hit the go. Another thing I wanna explain to you is we have this handy little offset sort of number here too. So the offset, essentially is so you can make an adjustment on the fly. So let's say you've got the filling profile and it fills the can up to a certain level, but let's say I've got a particularly tricky beer. Let's say I've got a hazy beer with lots of yeast suspended and it's frothing up a little bit more than usual. So then you can adjust that fill level down a little bit. Or let's say I've got another particular beer which um, you know, I want to fill a little bit higher, you can literally go into the offset figure. So that's an easy way to make a, a just an adjustment on the fly without having to go all the way into the profiles and fill around for the settings for that particular bottle or can type. It also will be effective for making a change sometimes if the temperature ch is changing throughout the day. So let's say you're starting off with very cold beer or the keg sitting out on the bench, uh, you'll notice that you hardly get any foaming to begin with, so you can feel a little bit more. And then as that keg warms up on the bench, you could actually, you know, you know tweak it down a little bit. As it's starting to fob up a little bit more, you might want to fill it, uh, you know, change that fill level. So that's super, super handy to have access to that rather than the display. So look, that can looks slightly under, so I'm just going to top it up by slightly more. So I'm basically going to get another can here, and I'm basically going to just tweak this number here and literally just press that button a few times. And now it's gonna add about another five millimeters of beer to this can next time I do a fill. So, so super handy uh, part of the process. So once that's uh, filled, I'm just gonna get this lid on. Ideally, you wanna be filling to a level where you're evacuating oxygen out of the headspace. It doesn't matter which type of vessel you're using, but headspace is one of the things that can really, you know, affect the amount of oxygen in that packaged product, and that greatly reduces the shelf life. So look, I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm gonna take this can off like this and put it on here, chuck it in the canning machine, and away we go. So simple as that. Something I really enjoy about the design of this machine is the fact that we've got the pinch valve. So this valve here, the way it works is it pinches on this beer line here to basically start and stop the flow. So it doesn't go through any solenoids or any valves internally to the machine. So there's one reason I love that in particular, which is I can control it manually. So let's say I need to get a glass under here and I just want to put a little bit of uh, beer in a glass. I can also push the top of the pinch valve and manually open it. That's also handy sometimes, let's say I'm doing 330 mil cans, but all of a sudden I chuck on one 500 mil can, I can fill it to 330, push this to just top it up manually to the 500 mark, and away I go. The other thing I really love about it is how simple it makes the cleanup. So because we've got no beer, which is entering the actual casing of the machine itself, that's massively advantageous to how this machine works. So if you're cleaning up, you just turn the tap off like that, and then what you do is basically take this out of here like so. So I'm gonna basically take that spout out. Then I'm gonna take the beer line off the top of the machine. And I wanna show you something, how easy it is to basically empty that out. Now also I'll say, because we took out that poppet from this earlier on, it makes it even easier to clean the beer line out too. So I've got that beer line there like that. I push down the top of that pinch valve and then literally that just pulls out of place. And as you can see, the only parts which contain beer I've just completely removed from the machine. So I can just chuck this in the dishwasher. Um, and as I was saying, no pop it in there. So I can just hold that under the tap in the sink and then just wash that out. So it could not be easier. 
Similarly, I've got this other side which goes onto the kegerator and this side um, basically has no poppet in it either. So then I basically hold that up to the tap in the sink and wash that out at the same time. Now, another little accessory that we could bring out in the future, uh, pending your feedback, is if we bring out this little temperature probe. When you're doing any type of like can filling or a bottle filling, if you're doing it fairly quickly, one of the most common problems you see is people starting to get foaming issues and generally that those foaming issues are caused by um, you know, the beer not being cold enough. So if we did supply a probe like this, we've kind of already got a plug on the circuit board in preparation for this if people want this feature. So what you would have to do is basically open up the casing, push the probe through this little grommet hole. So there's a hole in the top of the machine here. Basically pull that out like that. The cable would feed through the hole and you'd plug that in and essentially this you know third probe would secure the other two so instead of just having you know liquid gas on the front there you'd have liquid gas and also the temperature as well so as you're filling into the glass it would read the temperature on this probe we'd probably try to make it as instant read as possible so it quickly reads the temperature and that data gets fed up through the display here and then goes up to the web so you can even sort of you know track the uh, the, the temperature of the beer for that filling filling run that day so look if you guys think that's a cool accessory look we'll make it for you and have as an optional extra if you want but if you think that's cool put it in the comments below if we get enough comments we'll definitely make it for you now another small device I'm gonna show you is this little filter. If you guys have a product or a beverage which has a lot of sediment material in there, maybe you've got a lot of hops in the keg or you're going straight from the fermenter into the filling machine and there's too much uh, chunky bits, uh, what you wanna do is put an inline filter. We sell these duo type inline filters, really easy to use. As you can see inside here, just undo the cap, and it's got a stainless mesh little filter like that. So you can basically get this guy um, and have all the beer run through here. And that's gonna cause you a lot less havoc because a lot of solids can sometimes, you know, cause you more nucleation points and more foaming when you're trying to fill those bottles or cans. So good thing to remember is that if you have those types of issues, get this one. If you guys have any questions, definitely put them in the comments below and I'll try to get onto them as quickly as possible. But hope you guys enjoy using the cannula wrapped can and bottle filler. Look, I think it's an awesome tool for anybody wanting to, you know, fill up bottles and cans and make the process a little bit laborious. If you guys want to hear about any of the other cool new stuff we're bringing out, definitely bottom right hand corner, hit subscribe. And of course, join our Facebook homebrew community group. Just search Kegland homebrew community group on Facebook and boom, you'll be right there. Anyway, that's it and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.